Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Alan. Welcome back to another video. So today's video is actually a continuation of my last video. If you haven't watched that video yet, then uh, that kind of makes me sad. But um, yeah, on that video, we did kind of like an auto OC, a Ryzen Master versus Manual All Core Overclock versus my own custom PBO with Curve Optimizer. And that video was mostly for gaming, a little bit of results here and there with Cinebench and 3D Time Spy, but um, it's no multitasking type of video. It's uh, no pressure for the CPU type of video. Now, let me explain this very fast. Um, PBO actually can boost up most, some cores at least, and to a very much higher frequency. And all core overclock has all cores into the same frequency most of the time and very stable consistent let's per se but on that video we only did gaming or again most of it was gaming and gaming doesn't really utilize all 16 cores of my processor which is a 5950x so you kind of would see the results wherein you know pbo can win all of the time and has higher fps yada 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 but what if you actually stream what if you actually multitask what if you don't always just have your game open what can be the results so for this video we're going to be locking in our games into ccd0 only and then obs into ccd1 now alan what are ccds so just think of it this way this is a cpu my hand and then one part of it half of it is a ccd ccd0 and then another part of it is ccd1 so basically two mini CPUs inside the actual CPU. That's actually not how it is, but this is kind of like your CPU. And then one part is, is actually the CCD0 and then one part is CCD1. Mostly present on Ryzen CPUs and mostly present on 12 core CPUs and above. So mine's that 16 core, so it's eight cores, eight cores per CCD. For OBS settings, here are our settings right now. So X264 at 1080p 60 FPS. Uh, fast 14 threads. Now, maybe this is the part of the video we're in. I have to tell you which settings we are using because if you haven't watched my last video, you probably don't know what's on my custom PBO and also on my manual all core overclock. But here's the PBO settings into the left part of your screen right now. And the, here are the manual settings on the right side of your screen, right here in my hand. I'm not going to say it all again. You can just look at it right now. But yeah, we're going to be testing games this video. Most of the pieces are going to be low, but uh, yeah, we're going to be doing Cyberpunk 2077, Call of Duty, Fragpunk, and then Valorant. Yes, we did Valorant, but we're going to talk more about Valorant later because, you know, it was very inconsistent because they were, spoiler alert, different maps. Because I can't get the same map. It's not my problem. Now, three out of four games that we have in this video actually has benchmark on them. So that makes it a lot more consistent. And also... You can see the graphs on the top level of your screen per game window uh, with cap frame X. Now, of course, I already know the results. Um, so I'm just going to flash them onto you right now. And um, you can actually look at the quality even if there's any changes. Here you go. Here's the benchmark. All right. So our first game here would be Cyberpunk 2077. And as you can see on your screen right now, left side is PBO, custom curve optimizer as well, 5X scaler and all the other settings that I mentioned earlier. Right side will be my manual OC, 4.3 gigahertz, and that's it. Um, so you can see how high some cores are boosting up on the PBO section here. Well, on the right side with all core, it's just stable to 4.3 gigahertz, and that's it, nothing else. And what I've been noticing here, and I've noticed on other videos too, with manual core OC, the GPU is actually boosting longer than what it's supposed to now keep in mind i have the same settings for both of these again lowest preset in the game um, didn't change anything just press on the lowest preset but you can clearly see there's currently a winner right here once very stable once boosting higher but you can see it on the frame rate and frame time Now moving into Call of Duty, Black Ops 6, um, that's the latest Call of Duty that we have to date. Um, Black Ops 7 is announced, how are you guys you know, thinking about that, are you guys excited? But uh, yeah, you can see on the top level of your screen, or at least per side here, you can see the actual CPU 1 to CPU 16, that's all of the cores of my processor and you can see how it's working with the percentage, the usage, um, when it regards to both uh, CCDs, again CCD1 
is up to 8 cores and the CCT2 is from 9 to 16. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much seeing the same thing happening here in Call of Duty. Although it boosts high with the PBO, it also goes lower than 4.3 at times. And um, yeah, I think um, we'll see the results here once again. Now, this game is the biggest twist of all because this is a very, very, very CPU bound game, especially on the settings that we're playing on it right now, which is actually just low preset as well, lowest preset possible. And you can see which one is winning here. Um, on the PBO, it's actually boosting all the way up to 4.5 and very consistent at it as well, while also recording, even sometimes hitting around 4625 megahertz which is quite high and that's doing it on a lot of cores now although this game is not as demanding as call of duty and cyberpunk on the graphical fidelity it's quite more into the cpu side of things um and we're gonna be seeing some good results here for the pbo finally and yeah um, i'll let you guys watch the entirety of the frag punk benchmark gameplay here All right, and as you can see, we have a different type of view here. We got a full screen view of Valorant because I wasn't able to get the same map on Valorant. So I'm hoping that, you know, at least you can see how's the behavior of boosting and lowering down of frequency on the PBO. And you can see the frame rate and frame time, how it works out. I also added my camera here, a top down camera for my mouse and keyboard cam. And of course, it's an added task for OBS and our CPU since we're encoding on X264. Now, again, I promise you guys, I tried to get the same map for both the tests, but I wasn't able to get it. I, I, I swear, I quit so many times. I tried that match so many times, but I wasn't able to. So I guess you guys can just use this as kind of like a reference, but it's not a head to head comparison since different maps, different players, um, different movements even, and that all matters. Anyway, I'm not going to talk through the whole Valorant gameplay here you can skip it or you can watch how the usage and whatsoever on the top of the screen but um yeah That's basically the results. So as you've seen, all core OC gives better averages across the board, and um, especially with games like Call of Duty and Cyberpunk, but PBO does better in minimum FPS. At least, kind of, not, not all of the time. If you're gonna ask me about the temps, I'm not even gonna talk about them because they're pretty much the same, but you can watch my last video if you wanna be very specific with Cinebench temps. Both methods are still viable. Of course, my CPU, as I've stated on my last video, it's not the best CPU really. Like it's a 5950X, but it's not a good silicon 5950X. You can probably get higher OC even. I can probably do an all core 4.7 if I get a gold lottery silicon, um, but I didn't. Similar with PBO, I can probably get better gaming performance out of this specific CPU um, with just my settings right now and the CCDs if I had a better silicon. But I didn't have it and I didn't try to re-roll it. I'm just accepting that my CPU is not the best version that it can be. This video kind of helps someone out thinking about some stream setups with a 5950X or even if you are using a 7950X 
7900X 3D, 7950X 3D, is that even a thing? Or even a 9950X 3D even. Now with 3D Vcash, this way of actually setting CCDs can actually give you more gaming performance just to make sure that the games are actually running on the CCD0 because for X3D Vcash CPUs, X3D or the Vcash is actually running on CCD0 only. So um, yeah, I hope this video is a little bit educational. And um, yeah, if you do a lot of just gaming, maybe PBO can work out for you. But if you're doing a lot of multitasking or has a lot of apps um, while playing games or even you stream with X26 Pro whatsoever, then I guess um, you know what to do now. But again, still depends on your CPU, still depends on your setup, still depends on the games, a lot of variables. But I hope this video gave you some um, insights. Upcoming video of mine, 64 gigs of RAM versus 32 gigs of RAM. If you're interested in that, then um, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like.